Reggie and Me is a thought-provoking tale that sat in the backdrop of apartheid South Africa between the years 1976 and 1994. Now, this is a coming-of-age offering that tells the story of Hamish Charles Sutherland Fraser, a young star trying to navigate and make sense of the tumultuous social-political changes around him. James is also a renowned wildlife TV presenter, musician, conservationist, and he now joins me of a Skype to help discuss his fourth literary project. James, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. Welcome. Thank you very much for having me. It's great to be here. You toyed around with a lot of uh, titles for this book before you settled with uh, Reggie and me. Tell us about that and as well as why you decided to write this book. Um, yeah, we t toyed with many titles actually and eventually the publishers decided this one would be the most sellable title. Um, uh, yeah, it, the book... It originally started out as a, an attempt to write some kind of socio-political commentary um, on gender and race prejudice, but it very quickly the publishers realised that I'm just not of the right demographic to write something like that. Um, you know, coming from the most privileged part of South African society, it was inappropriate for me to write something that wasn't a fictional tale, and so. I went back to the drawing board and I started writing this fictional tale about this chap called Hamish who does grow up very privileged. Um, many of his traits are similar to my own and his upbringing is quite similar to my own. And we set the story in the backdrop of this tumultuous period in society and both the lack of awareness and then the coming awareness of what's going around the main character or what's going on in the country around the main character or the sort of central themes of the book. But it's told in a very light-hearted way. It's, um, there's an attempt to make it quite funny, uh, although poignant at times. Yeah, and you also have strong characters that play a pivotal role on the development of Hamish as a character. I mean, his parents, Stuart and Caroline, uh, Reggie, uh, his love, uh, his love interest, his career, and, uh, and and Christina, whom he's known all his life. Yeah, I think uh, obviously we're all shaped by the people we know, and many of us growing up in South Africa were semi-raised by nannies, and this is a sort of commonly known phenomenon in South Africa um, for young white South Africans growing up in the 70s and 80s. And so Christina Molloy is, a, is an enormous, a baloy in this particular book, is an enormous influence on Hamish, uh, as is uh, Robert Goumede, an incredibly important character in his life as a youngster. And then as for all young men, of course, the first love of his life uh, shapes his character quite profoundly. And there's a lot of emphasis in this book on the injustices brought about by apartheid that uh, many women had to endure during this time. Take us through that. Yeah, I think there, you know, it's not so much, I didn't want to paint it so much as a, an expose or anything like that. I think if many readers will read this and they'll take from it what they want to. So, for example, if you want to see the injustice of it, uh, it's there for you to see. But if you're not open to it, you could actually read the book quite comfortably, get through it and think, well, that was a funny, lighthearted tale. Um, but if you're vaguely aware, you'll see. All right, James, are you still with us? Oh, gosh, we seem to have lost James. Uh, oh, not was, great. Oh, you, go. at have you okay. still got me? We lost you for a second there, but uh, you are now back. Do continue. Okay, so uh, what I was saying is that the, the book doesn't aim to be an expose. It doesn't aim to have um, make a political comment. It aims to just state things as they were. And if you're open to seeing um, the injustices, especially for women and black people of the, of the time, you'll see them. And, but again, it's done in a very lighthearted way and it's not pointing fingers at anyone. It's just saying, you know, this is how it was and take from it what you will.
Yeah, it may be fiction, but then you just said that uh, it tells things as they are. Uh, and the book also explores some of the relevant themes that are topical even today, James, uh, one being the toxic masculinity and bullying in schools. Mm. Yeah, I think it does. I mean, that that for me is a big, big one. Obviously, Hamish and I have been to an all-boys school. I'm, I don't believe that bullying... I suspect that bullying is probably much less than it was back when I was there. Um, but I, you know, it was a very strong theme at school. There was a huge movement to get rid of bullying. I've no doubt it still happens, even if it's not quite as physical as it used to be. It'll definitely be uh, mental. It happens on social media all the time. And so that's a very strong theme. Uh, about you know how kids get through this stuff, especially boys at all boy, boys schools, but I also think that uh, some a lot of readers have taken this book and thought to themselves, this is a book about toxic masculinity, as it was back then, uh, and I think that it's not really about that. I think that bullying happens with in all girls schools it happens in co-ed schools human beings bully other human beings when they get the chance to do it, it doesn't even happen at school it happens post school in corporate life in any kind of business okay, life James, so before i let you go would it be fair to say that hamish's yeah. story was inspired by your own personal journey and uh, how much of yourself did you share in this book uh, about 50 percent of it i'd say is is probably true um <laughs> the rest is fiction. Okay. <laughs> All right, James, thank you so much for your time. Eh? Much appreciated. Thank you very much. Have a good day. You too, man. Good stuff. That was wildlife TV presenter, musician, conservationist, and best-selling author James Henry. He was speaking to us about uh, his recently released novel titled Reggie and Me. It is 7.43. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. This is Morning Life.